come and have a look at this. I think you'll find this fascinating if you've not seen measurements on atoms and molecules before. This is my homemade mass spectrometer. I will show you how it uh, works and how it was built in another video, so don't worry if you don't understand these descriptions of the parts. Here I'm just showing some measurements on it, um, uh, showing it working. Um, it's not working properly, um, there's uh, a rather poor resolution and dynamic range, but I'll be able to show you some spectrums that are recognisable. It was actually too noisy to hear the audio I recorded when I was making this video due to the mechanical vacuum pump, so I've had to put some audio on afterwards. Um, now initially we're looking at the spectrum in the residual gas after pump down. Um, that's about uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 5 tor. This meter I'm pointing out is showing the, um, the ion detector signal and I'm manually tuning about the mass filter so you can see it uh, go up and down. Um, uh, with a, um, a quadrupole mass spectrometer like this, um, when there's no signal on the quadrupole, you tend to get all the ions coming through. And then as the um, the RF is increased, it uh, becomes selective to particular masses. Um, yes, so in a minute I'm going to um, switch it over so that it's controlled by its uh, microcontroller and um, this is uh, it's got a, a link to a computer and um, on the computer I'll set it to make a measurement uh, that's what I'm doing now uh, you see some lights come on on the microcontroller there and uh, that's now made a, a scan and uh, I'm just um, instructing it to be displayed on the computer. Unfortunately you can't see the um, computer screen. I didn't realise that when I set it up. Uh, well you can't s uh, to the right of the text there is a, um, a graph that you can't see unfortunately but I'll show you that in a minute. So here we've got a, um, a graph of the mass spectrum of the, the pump down and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some carbon dioxide in the ionization chamber and uh, then we will look at the um, uh, compare the two spectrums. This is uh, a carbon dioxide cylinder that's used for making beer and I'm just putting some of this into the, um, the leak valve into the ionization chamber and uh, that's done now and uh, yeah now we're running the thing again. If you look at that meter to the left, that's measuring the uh, the electron current for ionization. And you might just be able to see, if you look carefully there, you'll see the second graph come up on the screen of the computer. You can uh, possibly just about see that. I'll show you that now in more detail. The, um, the red is the uh, the initial plot without carbon dioxide and the blue is the plot with carbon dioxide. Here you see the atomic masses of the elements we're looking at. Um, so water, hydrogen and oxygen is 18. Um, nitrogen, N2, is 28. And CO2, carbon and two oxides, is um, 44. So I'll show you a um, a better picture of the uh, the plot we've just taken and then you'll be able to uh, see um, the first run number one showing you a water line and uh, a nitrogen line and then when we put carbon dioxide in you see that suppressed the residual gas because that was blown out of the ionization chamber and so the water and the nitrogen are still there but then you see carbon dioxide come up at uh, uh, 44 atomic mass units. Um, you can see that the, the resolution is very poor, that is because the, um, the quadrupole filter isn't working properly as yet. You will notice that the mass scale is slightly out actually. Um, I haven't actually tweaked this. This is just as I, uh, I built the thing purely by theory, adjusting the voltages to what they should be to give the right masses. Um, actually it needs tweaking slightly to make it right. Um, anyway, uh, 
I hope you've uh, found this interesting. Uh, there'll be another video explaining um, how it uh, works internally and how it was made. Thank you for watching.